Lloyd Vance does a great job covering the NFL, also contributing reporter for the NFL Network. Kind enough to join me on a Thursday. What's going on, pal? Uh, doing great, Q. You know, hopefully you've calmed down since that uh, Eli situation. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, 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 I know you tuned into that, uh, to, to the monologue. Uh, I, I was, um, Hey, listen, there, you got to have passion when you're on the airwaves, right? I mean, it's just, that's just who I am. That's not going to change. I, 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 I bite a lot and I bark a lot. So it is what it is. I still think, uh, you know what, Let, we'll, we'll get into that before we get into the games real quick. I want to get okay. your thoughts on that. Um, and now they come out, Mara comes out today and, and, you know, they didn't handle it properly. Um, listen, there's no... You've covered the NFL long enough. There's no, there's no right way to do this, but there's a wrong way. So, we, we've kind of went through it yesterday. But what were your initial thoughts and reaction when you heard about the move? Yeah, we we kind of knew this was coming, but as you're saying, it went about it the wrong way. Why didn't he just pull him aside? Uh, meaning McAdoo and Mara, the three of them, Jerry Reese, maybe involved the general manager, and, and just kind of set out a course of direction for Eli and his remaining career with the Giants. Now, we probably know that McAdoo is probably not going to be there, and they need to decide, do they bring back a quarterback in the future and keep Eli around, or do they just totally rebuild altogether? So a lot of winds of change blowing around there. We know Eli still has the ability. Uh, he's around 36 years old, so he's got probably about two to three years left in his arm. And I know Jacksonville would love to have him down there. So uh, we're going to have to see how this plays out. But like I said earlier, I, I just thought they went about it the wrong way. And then you could see he was visibly upset about the situation. Yeah, and, and, and rightfully so. You know, I said this on the air yesterday, and I, I don't think if people really follow the NFL or, or understand what he's meant to the NFL or that franchise, uh, he is an all-time giant. I mean, if you look at the track record, the resume, the numbers alone, you look at what he's meant to that organization, and he's one of the clutchest quarterbacks in playoff history. And and I don't really think that's debatable. Um, but the bottom line is, listen, every quarterback to some extent has a shelf life. Uh, Breeze will go through it. Brady will go through it. Big Ben's going to go through it. And Rivers is going to go through it. Yeah, correct. And, and I kind of cover this situation with, with Don McNabb his last time with the Eagles. You could just see they're kind of moving on. They had Kevin Cobb waiting in the wings. They had drafted him. I mean, I didn't knew this, and, and they went kind of back and forth. But they did it in the off season and they had conversation with him, and then they pulled the trigger. So that that's probably the best way to do it. As you're saying, everybody's going to get old, and, and every team's going to have to move on some, yep. at some point. But this guy is, you know, borderline Hall of Famer. And when you look at his numbers, and the MVPs and the Super Bowls and the Super Bowl wins, he probably does get in the Hall of Fame, and they probably need to treat him a lot better. Yeah, he, he'll go down as one of those quarterbacks, never really got his just due until his time is over. You know, it's funny, too, because when you when you cover quarterbacks and you cover teams and you always talk about, like with McNabb, right, when we started to realize McNabb and Andy Reid and, and there was infighting there, and I remember, you know, because we both cover those teams, you always say to yourself, well, wait, what, where's something getting leaked out, right? And and I know right away people want to talk about Jacksonville or maybe Denver um, going forward. At the end of the day, it's pretty simple. Either the quarterback's agent is starting to leak something or the other team is starting to leak something, meaning Jacksonville, if we use that as an example, which tells you right now, I mean, if you're Bortles and you're Jacksonville with Coughlin, the last thing you want to do is have one of these bad games going forward <laughs> to close out the season. You don't. Yeah, he, he's on notice as, as as we know Bortles. They, you know, the wins, the team's winning kind of despite of him, and, and they're running the football effectively, playing great defense, and, and you know they have some tough games coming up, and, and we're going to see if, if Bortles is able to carry them to the finish line. I know this week they have the Colts, so they should probably win that game, but uh, they'd feel a lot better if Eli was their quarterback going into the playoffs than Blake Bortles. I'll put it that way. All right, you got the Eagles and uh, Seattle on Sunday night. You have a good slate of games, and I know Seattle's still wounded. I know they're a dog in this one. Their secondary's got some major issues and major injuries. Um, first of all, you're still playing in Seattle, and it's a different team from last year. The Eagles are much better. Seattle, you know, defensively and, and that offensive line, they're not as good, but they still have that X factor in Russell Wilson. Do you think this is a situation right away where Jim Schwartz knows they have to have a spy. They have to key on Russell Wilson and make sure he doesn't beat them, not only with his arm, but with his legs. 
Well, they can try to, Q, but I just don't know if that Eagles linebacking core has a guy that's able to spy him. You know, Bradham, Kendricks, they're not the best cover guys, and, and uh, they are going to have to keep an eye on Russell Wilson. I think the key for them is getting that outside pressure from Vinny Curry, Brandon Graham, making sure they're keeping him in the pocket. And let's face it, the Seattle Seahawks' offensive line has not been one of the best. They're still acclimating Dwayne Brown. Hopefully they've gotten it together. And I was very surprised to see that Seattle was a six-point underdog at home. That's the highest it's ever been. So it, it, they're going to come out with a big chip on their shoulder. And the Eagles, you know, you and I have talked in, in the past about the Eagles teams they've beaten. So this is going to be a true test for them. Uh, listen, I think so too. And when you're ten and one, you're ten and one. Make no no mistake about it. But the next several games on the road, the competition gets ratcheted up. Uh, the atmosphere it's a different. There's more juice in the building. It's a little more electric. The environment on the road. You know, you maybe you're not hearing your 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 play call coming in as much as you want to. There's a noise issue. There's that factor. Again, you're not in the friendly confines of the link. There's so much, and you still at and and Lloyd, you still ultimately have. A second-year quarterback who, again, MVP candidate, second-year head coach, NFL coach of the year candidate. But you still have those two guys. They haven't been in this spot before. That's why I think it's fascinating. It is because you got to be battle-tested going into the playoffs. I know a lot of teams feel good when they have that really nice record, but we've seen it a lot. And I just saw a stat from NFL Stats that talked about teams that have started 10-1 and have only made the Super Bowl – but won a Super Bowl 20% of the time. So, yeah, you got that great record. But teams are going to ratchet it up for you. And, and everybody's talking about the Eagles. I know it's college football, but they're ranked number one. And, and somebody's going to want to knock them off. So the Seattle has a lot of pride. They have Bobby Wagner and Michael Bennett, Earl Thomas. These are veteran-type players, and, and they're going to be ready to play. So I'm really looking forward to this game. Are you surprised of the progression from year number one to year number two with the Rams and Jared Goff, and, and you got a young head coach, which I, I think you go back and you say it's more of an indictment on Fisher, but the way that Goff has played this year with their rushing attack, they can play defense, and he's got speed all over the place. Um, how about his jump from year one to year two? Oh, it's just been tremendous. I, I mean, we were writing off this guy at one point. We were saying another Coach Tedford, quarterback system, quarterback coming from Cal that just couldn't get it done, but uh, he looks very comfortable in the pocket. They brought Andrew Whitworth over from the Bengals to play tackle for them, and he's really solidified that offensive line, so he's comfortable back there. Gurley's getting all his touches, whether it's swing passes or running the football, and the other guys are really clicking, and I thought Sammy Watkins, that was an interesting pickup because Buffalo gives up on him, and, and he's staying healthy, and he's that deep threat that golf is needed, so this is a very dangerous team and then you talk about Weed Phillips cleaning up that defense that Fisher left over. They got a lot of talent on on that side of the ball as well with Donald and the rest of those guys. So another team we're going to see play the Eagles, uh, not this week, but next week. Yeah, great stat on Jared Goff. He, uh, 26 sacks in seven starts as a rookie in 2016. And you mentioned that left tackle, uh, um, uh, Whitworth, and then you, Andrew Whitworth. Yeah, they bring in uh, Sullivan to the center. And uh, you're talking about a quarterback that's been sacked seven fewer times in four more games. So they're really doing a heck of a job. Um, is New England – I mean, is New England – Give me a team that can actually compete with New England come playoff time, other than, say, Pittsburgh, and New England's had their number. Well, when you look at the AFC side, I know it, we got a lot of games to play, but this team has always given the Patriots trouble. You have the, the Ravens kind of lurking out there. Their defense is coming together. They're able to run the football. I know Flacco wants to throw the football more down the field, but they're hitting those key short throws, and uh, they're a team that could give them some trouble. And you know, if Bortles has a game where he's not turning the football over, that defense could travel and play well against the Patriots as well. The Steelers, they're still a little up and down for my taste, but they have so many offensive weapons that obviously they could give the Patriots a game, and we're all looking forward to that Week 15 game where they play each other in Pittsburgh. Yeah, all right, before I let you get out of here, you know, again, when we get to this point in the season, we, we really know uh, the, the the talent, the speed of the game, everything gets ratcheted up, the competition gets ratcheted up. And I'm looking across the board, we got some good matchup, the Rams, the Cardinals, the Eagles, um, and, and uh, Seattle, you know, Minnesota, Atlanta, that all of a sudden they've turned it around, Atlanta's starting to figure it out. Um, you know, I just want to ask you in closing, with this Minnesota team, why doesn't Zimmer just come out and say Keith Keenum, uh, Case Keenum is going to be the starter uh, going forward, period? That's it. Why does it have to always be week to week? 
uh, yeah, he needs to give him that that vote of confidence and pat him on the back because he was just named the NFC Offensive Player of the Month. Uh, a guy who's really just getting it done, and, and that team is built around him. Let's face it, they lost their running back, Cook, and, and ever since then, it's really been on like Case Cam to protect the football, and then he's hitting some big plays down the field with Thielen and Diggs, so he's doing a great job. I know Teddy Bridgewater is a fixture on that team, but that was a bad injury, and you just want to throw him out there, especially when the team's been winning. Uh, they have so many consecutive wins right now, and, and you just want to keep the train rolling. But this is a tough assignment going now to Atlanta. We know how tough um, that Ryan is down there in the Dome, so it, it's going to be a tough assignment. But I think the Vikings can get it done because their defense has been playing very solid as well. All right, my friend. Always appreciate it. Um, I'm yeah. glad you had a good chuckle yesterday. Enjoy the uh, <laughs> enjoy the games, and uh, we'll talk next week, pal. Always appreciate a couple of moments. Uh, all right, man. Thanks for having me on. All right, you got it. Lloyd Vance, NFL contributor for the NFL Network, covers the NFL, has been covering the NFL for well over 20 years.